Now, although we focused quite a lot on this in the last year, we do have a few other projects that we should be getting on with as well. Yeah, we originally started Pedalbox so that it gave us some motivation to keep doing work on our cars. And instead of that, we bought something new, and we have done quite a lot of work on it, and it has kept us going. So, great success there. Yeah, but it's been a bit of a distraction from our others. We've spent a lot of time on this and kind of neglected the other vehicles. So, let's see if we can get back to those a bit. So we've had this on Pedalbox before. This is my Mark II Golf that we tried to get running when we were going to go up to EBC for the uh, roadkill event, and it's still not been running since. We had a fire. Oh, fire! But when we tried to take it for its MOT, it got all the way down, and then it died. We're not sure what it is. It could be crank position sensor, but we've actually fixed that now. We're now thinking it's coil pack, so this is going to get put back on the road soon, as I can decide which coil pack to put on. Under this cover is my first car that I had since I had a driving license. It's a Mark 1 VW Golf. I kind of owe it. It's been sitting here under cover for a good few years now. It's been under this cover in this corner as long as I've lived here, about two years. Before that, it was sitting in the garage in my last house for about two years. And before that, it was sitting in the driveway at my last house for about another year and a half. And the whole time, it's not had a working engine. It's still got fire damage on it. It's still got crash damage on it. And the only reason I haven't scrapped it is because I feel like I really owe it a debt. This is the car we were originally going to start pedal box with. Uh, we bought it for £150. It's a 1.8 T-Sport Quattro A3. Uh, it's been to the Nürburgring. It's been to a couple of track days. We put wheels, tyres, new pads, discs, loads of general sort of bits and pieces on it. And before we really published anything at all, we started with the chassis. It's my big red money pit. A Rover ST1 2600. It's not a V8, it's a straight six version. It's not a manual, it's got the automatic. It's not a Vitesse, it's got the big squishy Vandenplas springs. It is as bargy as they get and I love it. It doesn't go anywhere fast, but it gets everywhere, putting a massive smile on my face. Unfortunately, the carburetors are a bit unhappy at the minute. They're running super, super lean, so I'm gonna be doing a bit of fueling tweaks on those, trying to get those running right. I don't think the head gasket has been changed in like ever. Um, and the compression seemed a bit low when I was looking at some of the plug, uh, when I was checking that a little while ago. So I've got a bunch of new cylinder head gasket, uh, sorry, a new cylinder head gasket and a bunch of other gaskets to go in. New plugs, all that sort of fun stuff. And you'd think maybe with all of those different cars, all of them needing a little bit of work here or a bit of planning here or generally just sorting out, getting another one would be a stupid idea. And you'd be right, it is a really stupid idea, but nevertheless, this is a 1966 Ford Thunderbird that I bought on eBay, sight unseen, and had drop shipped to the house. Which is probably a stupid idea. Well, it is a stupid idea, but I think it's probably turned out better than I really could have expected. Uh, it's a 390 big block, three-speed automatic, uh, with paint. -ish. Some, a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's largely complete. The engine runs. If you pour fuel in the carburetor floats directly. Um, the gearbox doesn't currently engage, but we think that's just a fluid issue, so that's not really a problem. The brakes seem alarmingly good, although they have no fluid in them. The parking brake works spectacularly well. We have had a poke around, and the discs and pads on the front are all right. The drums and the shoes on the back are all right. All of the rubber hoses are non-perished. All of the rubber seals on the rear slave cylinders are in good condition. In theory, I could just pour fluid into it, and drive it. I'm not sure you'd want to. No. No, the DVLA... I want would... you to, but the DVLA might not. The DVLA would be unhappy. It's never been registered. It's been in the country for a couple of years. Uh, the previous owner sold it. Uh, he was downsizing a few cars. And, um, yeah, it's it's quite big. It's, it's... Well, that's pretty much our entire fleet here. Yep, we've done pretty well with uh, Pedalbox so far, keeping us on track of one project. The fact that it was meant to keep us on track of all of the other projects and definitely not lead to this one is neither here nor there. Yeah. The idea we're going for now is if we get all the projects we were working on originally into our mid-month episodes, this might keep us on track working on them as well as the track car. And maybe they'll see the road again soon. Well, this one hopefully definitely will, because it doesn't need an MOT anymore. It doesn't need tax. It's good. The Mark 1's not going to see the road in a hurry. No, probably not. The Rover, though. The Rover's good. Yeah, the Rover's all right. The yeah. Mark II should get back on soon. So Mark II doesn't much. Yeah. I think we're good. Just keep watching and see if we fail. Wait for us to fail. Yeah, wait happen. for us to fail. Yeah, yeah.